Coming January 2013, the culmination of three seasons of filming in the nastiest conditions of the year, the River Smallmouth Winter Patterns DVD. Risking your life and freezing your extremities numb isn't for everyone. If you are one of the select few who won't and can't stay off the water, you owe it to yourself to get this educational resource. Here's a quick preview of the topics covered in this two hour long video. Third 19 incher from this hole right here. Right in the middle of a little snow squall. The old adage that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water goes to extremes in winter. It's more like 98% of the fish and one tenth of 1% of the water once the water dips into the 30s. So how do we locate those spots? You can pound all of it until you stumble upon them. Or you can look at it from the fish's perspective of their biggest challenge in winter, a cold icy flood with trees and trailer homes churning down the river at highway speeds. They go to places where they can survive the ice out flood. Dial into these winter pools with regular trips to the same water as the water chills down in the fall. Here's the process. To illustrate this, uh, this process of doing the same float over and over again throughout the months leading into winter, I've done a couple illustrations here. Um, that aggregation is starting to tighten around the, the deeper water upstream from this, uh, you know, this dominant ledge system. Uh, and then the shallow water in between that has a lot of current, uh, there's not a whole lot. You want to make a beeline for that next one. This one in particular is about a nine foot deep hole and uh, they're spread, you know, throughout that, but that, that aggregation is uh, starting, starting to tighten up. And really, what they're going to tighten up on are the spots within these, these pools that are current protected. And um, once you get into to January and February, you really find out where those uh, spots within the spots are in terms of current protection. So you've caught some fish. You know it's a good pool. Now it's time to narrow down your efforts to the spot within the spot. Here come a couple examples. Right now we're fishing in February um, and we're fishing the main part of a wearing hole, the deeper area. Uh, what we do though in the mornings and the evenings, we'll actually move to the top of the hole or to the taper ups at the bottom of the hole because fish will move to those positions to feed. This spot right behind me is one of the places in this pool that I've, I've probably pulled more 20 plus inch smallmouth out of than anywhere I've fished over the years. And the reason why I think that's such a hot spot, right around there, you have that this notch right there, and that deposits a bunch of gravel right at the right out into a fairly deep area. I know they winter out in this deeper water. Here I'm at six feet. I know there was some spots I was checking with the depth finder that were eight, nine feet out here. But right up there is real shallow and that's the kind of place when the sun does come out that they're gonna pull up into that and look for something to eat. That one just felt like a leaf. Because I felt the weight and I just before I'm thinking, do I have like a log or something that I'm pulling in? Letting it sit, I really felt him crunch it too. Ten seconds and he latched onto it. He hit it somewhat semi-hard and then he started fighting, felt like a brick on the end of it. Yeah, 18 and a quarter inch. Back in the drink. See you, buddy. What did it feel like? That fish that I caught, it was so cold it felt like a wet roll of toilet paper. That's a that's the best way I can think to describe it. Okay, <laughs> wet roll of toilet paper. Do you feel how do you how do you feel when it hit? Singular, it? single, just dunk. Uh -huh. he, he jacked it. What did the bite feel like? If the preceding clips just confused the heck out of you, then you're not alone. Anglers try to assign colorful language to describe what they feel when they know or don't know that it's a fish. But only experience on the water in winter teaches that. What the following clips can do, however, is provide several tricks and good habits to speed up your learning curve on what it feels like. Even experienced hands miss the usually subtle to indetectable winter bite. So take each of these tips to heart. This segment 
alone may contribute more than all others to your success or failure as a winter angler. In the winter time, I really like the boat to be as, as stopped and as slow as possible. So with the anchor, you really get that. You actually get that. You get the boat as a stable platform so that you can fish. And when you feel movement, it's not the boat moving. It's actually the uh, it's actually the, the fish moving the, the line. So I use the anchor almost exclusively in the winter time. I don't really use it too much other than that. Learn to tie your own hair jigs. It's really not that hard. It makes them expendable and they just flat out yeah. work. Wrap it right over that, cinch down. All you really need to do, take a little pinch of this stuff. Rabbit hair jig here. This is a jig I tied on a, a do it worm nose mold, Mitsuo size one sickle hook. Suspending jerk baits are a staple of river anglers spring through fall. But those who put them away once the water temperatures fall into the 30s can miss out big time. By big, I mean that two of the three heaviest fish caught in the filming of this DVD were caught in suspending jerk baits. There is a caveat of this cold water big fish tactic. You've got to dead stick and it has to be absolute in its motionless drift. Most anglers can't pull it off. Two anglers who have been able to dead stick absolutely are my son Sawyer and Cooper. The four and five year old can pull it off. There's no reason why you can't. Here comes some more specific pattern info on the rod reel and line setup, drift tactics, and likely looking structure targets. Enjoy. 20 and a quarter. What a beautiful, beautiful fish. A lot of times I'll walleye fish on the Delaware in the dead of winter. And when I say dead of winter, I mean February. And um, they like jerk baits, so I'll be out fishing for jerk baits. And I'll be surprised that at 39, 38 degrees, fishing extremely slow, I'll get some slob smallmouth to strike this thing. Other chapters include downsizing the bait, tail races and spring influences, the finesse jig and crawl, float and jig, flood conditions, hypothermia prevention, maintaining confidence, paddle tail grubs, reapers and finesse worm, slow roll bottom bounce spinner baiting, cold water tube tactics, warm water discharges, warming trends and photo period, and the winter pool exodus. If you winter fish or want to get into it, this DVD is prerequisite viewing. It will teach you how to be safe on the water. It will give you insight on forage and presentation specifics that have been hard won lessons by Jeff Little, Chris Gorsuch, and Juan Baru. It will make you a more effective angler, not just in winter, but year round. Get your copy at confidencebaits.net or at kayakfishinggear.com.